So I've created this slightly more creative tutorial in regards to images that are okay, but they're not really that interesting in terms of the subject and the background. What we're going to do is try and change this image from how it is to making it more silhouetted and replacing this guy for something a little bit more of a fantasy portrait. Let's get into it. Now, if I seem a little bit vague in terms of kind of where this tutorial applies, then you'll understand it as we go through. But it's more of a kind of a creative approach to looking at the differences as to how you can make an image a little bit more dramatic. As I said, if the foreground subject isn't that interesting in relation to the background. So it can be applied in so many different ways. I think portraits, it can be kind of quite nice because it creates this cool little fantasy ethereal look. I'm going to start off with my photograph here that the subject is has got a bit of action, a bit of movement. We've got a nice, clean, simple background, but it's not very dramatic at all. What I want to do to begin with is basically to crush all the detail as best as possible in the foreground because we're trying to create a silhouette. So in doing so, we're going to go to image adjustments and then come down to threshold. So it depends upon how the default set looks like on your initial version. It may look a little bit like this. You may just have to move the slider along. But what we're looking to try and do is basically to drop out a lot of that detail, really make a lot of these black and white areas pretty much just big blocks of black. So once you've got a decent amount, a decent level, I think around about 124 is probably going to work quite nicely here. You may have to go in a little bit closer because what we want to try and do is get rid of all the little bits of detail, the spots of white um, that's actually on our image. So we're just going to get our brush tool, set our swatch color to black and just go in a little bit tighter and just brush around. I'll zoom in a little bit closer just to make sure we get all the areas looking nice and smooth so we get a clear block of foreground and background as well. I may actually go a little bit closer into our subject here and just fill in that white area around his feet. It's just so we don't get any of our sky replacement in those areas. So looking across again, again, you may have find little spots of black in the white areas. So again, it's worthwhile taking those out. It depends how precise you want to be over it. So I'm going to come a little bit closer, maybe just take a few out. I may just leave a few in. And again, now the next thing I want to actually do is crop the image a little bit tighter because I want to lose some of this black area. It's important to have some to establish the foreground, but I don't want too much of it either. It's always good to get a nice composition. So we're going to follow that rule of thirds, just tighten it up. So our subject now sits right on that vertical third. And we're going to adjust so the horizon lines pretty much along that bottom third there. So we're set. We've got our subject, simple background, simple foreground, but a nice clear subject. To get our sky replacement, we can go over to edit and sky replacement. And with sky replacement in Photoshop, you've got a range of different choices. There is so many variations in terms of different styles, but you can see straight away how it's made that flat, pretty much boring image that we had before way more interesting and a lot more dramatic. Now you can go through and you can choose the right type of sun, the right type of background to kind of set the mood or set the style for your photograph. So it's completely up to you as to how the final version looks. I think that's actually kind of quite nice there. It gives us that nice evening stroll type of effect. You can make further changes with the sky replacement tools down at the bottom here. You can fade the edges, change the brightness levels, you can then go on to change the color temperature within them as well. Obviously set the scaling right because you don't want this huge big cloud and sky in the background when we're actually kind of quite a distant from our subject. So it's important to get the scaling right as well. So make sure it always kind of fits the image and just goes over the edges there. When it comes to the output, it's best just to set it as a duplicate layer. If you just want a simple flat layer of what we've done, if you want to have all the little options of being able to make more finite adjustments and have some other adjustment layers and everything set it out, separated out, just choose new layers. But just for the benefit of this tutorial, there we go. We'll set it to that. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick, simple tutorial. Hopefully it gives you the opportunity to maybe try a few more kind of creative approaches to images that you've been sat there looking at thinking, hmm, it's nice, but it's not that interesting. Or what else can I do to it? give this a try. If you've enjoyed it, keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thank you very much for watching.